What's up guys, so we got a brand new reaction today, I just stumbled upon this one and it says by Joe Rogan, New York is not safe anymore. Now, when I went to New York, guys, I was just there for a day because I was staying in Canada, I said I wanted to go over the border, so I was in upstate New York, it was in Syracuse, and it was crazy, guys, it, it seemed like it was just like a hood, like the ghetto type of stuff, it seemed insane, dangerous, guns everywhere, every single street that I went down, it said get your concealed carry you know handgun license i was like this is insane you know so unless you have a, a weapon like a gun i felt you know you'd feel unsafe in, in the u.s for sure new york to me seemed safe though like it didn't seem bad like like it, it just seemed poor that's all guys like ghetto type of thing but everyone was so friendly i couldn't believe how friendly this friendliest country I, i've ever been to in the world is the usa guys i thought that irish people were friendly like and we are friendly guys like irish people are friendly but <laughs> i've met some assholes in my time i'll just say that much but America is ridiculous, bro. They are so friendly, guys. Because if you do anything, you know what I mean? It's going to be the Wild West, guys. Anyway, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you all think. And let's get it. Prevalence of crime has increased pretty noticeably. Yeah. And, and like I said, New York was pre-pandemic the safest city i thought in the world i grew up there yes. i was like it's so safe it's insane and i always would say the same thing about new york i would say new york is the only city that like any time of the day any day of the week you feel like the vibrance you feel the people where i would go to a city like even though i love it like a city like cleveland cleveland would feel even though it's open it felt closed like that's just what the city always mm. felt like and I, I was like i never felt that once in new york but now over the last like year or two new york a lot of times like 50 percent of the week feels closed even though it's open and i'm like oh snap it hit new york which i and then you know i talked to my yeah, father i think the last let's just say four years ago that ruined the whole world for a long time that lockdowns let's say they're about that you know complain about new york he was like chris shut up He's like, I grew up in New York in the 70s and 80s. Like, it is nowhere near as violent and unsafe as it was in the 70s and 80s. Like, you just grew up in peacetime. He was like, you know, you grew up in peacetime America. Your generation are all peace kids. You're born in the eye of the storm. Yeah, he's like, so you didn't see any of this shit. Yeah. He was like, so you, what, you, you just had the privilege of growing up in a New York City and in America that was at, at the top, you were at the top of the Roman Empire. He was like, and now what you're seeing it's kind of a little bit more of the fabric society was like i yeah, because of the, like the recessions when people get poor they get desperate my dad's like i grew up in the 60s 70s and 80s this is just reminding me of old new york he's like i kind of like this grittiness of this but you grew up everybody's safe that was never going to be real he was like and you know i don't it will probably come back at some point but it's going to take a long long time but i don't know i feel like now like in my you know when, when i'm even like my mom want to take my daughter to times square to the american girl doll store and i just I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, I, I can't, I can't allow you to take her. She's like, what? It's, it's, I'm your mom, your granddaughter. We'll take, we'll go on the train, and I'll take her to the store, and I'll be back. I was like, no, I can't, I, I won't be able to function. My anxiety won't be able to function of thinking about you and my daughter on the train because if there's a homeless person down there that's crazy off his meds and he throws one of you in front of the tracks and something happens, I won't be able to live with myself. Oh, and those thoughts Christ. were never in my head ever. They were never ever ever in my head, but now they are. And I don't know if it's because it's reality, the media, something. I, 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 I don't know what it is. I think it's a little bit of both. It it is reality it has happened yeah so to deny that it's happened would be that that's ridiculous yeah we, there's videos of people doing it right the question is like how many of them how much do you need to worry about it yeah and, and how often is this happening it's not happening that often you consider how many people there are yeah but the well, i mean how many people does new york city have like probably like what eight million seven eight million so like compared to like any other city in the world it's probably very safe compared to like you know some third world country or something like in brazil like rio is crazy they have like cartels and shit so yeah that's weird. the fact that it could be a possibility at all right that you know what's really crazy is like giuliani cleaned new york city up he did he really did he i mean did. it was a lot of people said it was like great overreach and thuggish behavior by yeah. the police and all the horrible shit they did the stop and frisk shit yeah. what would they do they would just stop you and so a a anybody so i had a friend who's he's now a detective he was a beat cop 21 years old when giuliani implemented this stop and frisk thing and he said look he was like I i'm being honest you might a friend he's you know he's, he's latino guy he's like i promise you our sergeant would come in every morning talk to us about stop and frisk and he said you stop 
each race, ethnicity, religion, you stop everybody equally. Okay? He said, that's what you're looking for. You're st everything oh, is equal. Okay? I like that, though. I'm not, yeah, like, you need to be equal in this world, guys. You know what I mean? I'm not against this racist BS. Like, I'm not for any of that bullshit, guys. You need to be equal in this world, guys. What do they say about the U.S., guys? Liberty and freedom for all, guys. You know what I mean? They wrote that in, in the, what is it, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. So, I think we should have some shit like that in Ireland, too. I think we do have that in our Constitution, guys. You know, freedom for everyone. You know what I mean? None of this, like, people get played up, you know, craziness, but crazy. But that stop and search, we actually have that in Ireland, I think, as well. So, crazy. He said, but his beat was Times Square. He said, now, if I went in to Times Square and I grab a group of kids, pat them down, they have something, right? But they're, you know, uh, uh, from a socioeconomic status that, you know, is a little impoverished, whatever. What am I supposed to do? Say, oh, you have a gun and a knife and drugs on you. Um, but, I, you know, I can't, I, I, I'm not going to take this off you. I'm just going to let you go back out into society. He said, no, I would have to then arrest them. He said, well, then I would take like another group of kids that wouldn't have anything and then you let them go. He said, and then that became like they brought race and identity politics into that type of policing. But we were stopping everybody equally. It's just crime is in certain areas for certain reasons. He was like, that's above my pay grade. He said, but when they stopped that stop and frisk, he said, the reason, the thing what's happening, at least in New York now, he said, it's, it's we'll know that uh, somebody has a gun or a weapon. We'll know that they're a career criminal. We know. He said, but we are not allowed to, to, to intervene at all unless they commit, unless they act first. He said, so that creates a lot of um, confidence for the criminal and it creates a lot of, you know, we're, we are scared. He was like, flat out, I'm scared to apprehend someone because the police union, if I make a mistake or if it looks like I made a mistake, is not going to have my back and I'm going to get sued and lose my family and lose my life. So you start to say, well, just, we know you have shit, but just deal with it. Unless you're raping, murdering someone, then I'll intervene. But oh, the little. Yeah, it's more of a preempt, like, the thing about, I remember like, I was in Canada for a month, like, the police seemed so proactive, like, they'd be going around, like, talking to people, like, it was very proactive, like, that's, you know, the police and the dete detectives and stuff, even here, they're good, but I feel like here, a lot of the times, the crime is like, you know, post-crime, you know what I mean, it's not pre-active, it's reactive, you know, it's reacting to the, what's happening, so I don't know, guys, yeah, it's a weird one, because I guess you lose some freedom if you can just stop and search anybody, that is kind of a loss of freedom as well, so. Little petty shit, I'm not going to get involved in anymore. Well, I think we could look at it both ways, right? Right. And this is one way to could look at it. The old way of uh, stopping and frisking is easy to abuse. Of yeah. course. And when you think about the power that you give someone, where yeah. they could just walk up to anyone, yeah. some businessman they don't like, some, some fucking yeah. guy who thinks he's hot shit, some guy who's with his friends who's a little too loud, True. you just walk up to him and go, come on, take, let me see all your shit, I'm going to touch you in front of everybody, make you feel uncomfortable. True. Like, what, what, shouldn't you have to commit a crime? Yes before the police are allowed to frisk you. And yeah, that's kind of true as well. That's why I said, guys, I, I beat Joe Rogan to it. Like, it's true. Take your stuff. Shouldn't right. you at least be accused of a crime? Yeah. Shouldn't there at least be some sort of criminal behavior where the police have to intervene? Because then they're like, people are going to self-correct, and you're going to act differently in order to try to, to stop the cops from doing this to you. Right. Like, you... You you got to that that's like a freedom issue. That's yeah. a real egregious attack on freedom. It's true. It's just true. be able to point at someone yeah. right. and be able to just frisk them. Yeah. No crime, no nothing. Yeah. Right. Like that's a weird power yes. to give police. And it's that's not good. And the other thing's not good either. It's yeah. not good to take away all their power either. It's yeah. not good to to uh, make it so the cops are terrified to respond to a call. That's not good either. So there needs no. to be some sort of a logical recognition of what the issues are. Yeah. And right now, I don't think that's happening. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, a guy, a guy lives with me, my, my girlfriend's uncle, transgender guy, T.T. Jerry, 20 years in prison. Jerry, Shout out to T.T. Shout out T.T. Jerry's lived a fucking wild life. On your podcast all the time. On my podcast all the time. Yeah, like it's, it is crazy, guys. I would love to hear what people think about that. Do you think that they should bring that into Ireland? Like, that would be crazy because... Yeah, like, it, it is it is tough. It is tough to think, like, what the hell, you know what I mean? How do you solve issues like that? But, bro, I think stopping and searching people is a bit immoral. You know, because you just give police all the power, then it's a bit crazy. But, yeah, let me know what you all think, guys. Drop a comment down below. I'll see you all in the next one, man. Peace.